Hi friends, it's Deanna Williston with Our Blooming Catholic Life and I'm coming to you today with a book review. Since we had such a great time on Wednesday talking about pawpaw seeds and compost seeds and black walnuts, things that are native to me, I thought you might be interested in knowing the natural world of St. Francis of Assisi. This book is on the landscapes, plants, and animals that St. Francis knew and loved. It's by Susan Lamb and Tom Bean with a foreword by Keith Douglas Warner, OFM, and it's done by Tao Publishing. Let's look a little bit on the back. What does it say? Tom Bean, oh, Bean, B-E-N. I thought it was Bean with an M, oops. Tom Bean has photographed the natural world and traditional cultures for over 30 years, ever since taking up a camera when he was a ranger at, with the National Park Service. His nature and travel images have appeared in hundreds of books, calendars, magazines, and textbooks worldwide. You can find him at TomBean.com. Susan Lamb wrote her first collection of natural his history essays while a ranger naturalist at Grand Canyon National Park. She then worked as a study leader for the Smithsonian National Associates and other educational programs for 10 years. She has written over 20 books on natural and human history, and you can find her at susanlam.net. And the book then says, the landscape of Umbria has a special beauty from gentle, gracious hills in the west to the high and often snow-covered mountains in the east. It is a landscape that blends nature with human culture in a unique and unforgettable way. <laughs> this was the stage setting for the drama of Francis of Assisi, who may have been the first European to see nature as beautiful and convey that vision to others. I don't know about that. The beauty of Umbria that inspired Francis is still there today, as you will see in the evocative words of Susan Lamb and the remarkable photographs of Tom Bean. The rocks and landscapes, the winds and climates, the rivers, lakes, and marshes, the plants and animals of Umbria and the neighboring parts of Italy are all brought to life in this book. It could serve as a substitute for going there, or better, it could be the inspiration for a trip and a memory afterwards. And that was written by Dr. Walter Alvarez, geologist and author of T-Rex and the creator of Doom in the Mountains of... S oh, <laughs> T-Rex and the Crater of Doom and the Mountains of St. Francis. Two different books there. <laughs> On the bottom, then it says, For more than 20 years, St. Francis wandered on foot through the exquisite landscape of central Italy. Accounts of his epiphanies, epiphanies, a radiant full moon, a fish playing near the surface of a lake, a harrowing sound of a leper's rattle, still resonate eight centuries later. He speak to us not only of his tranquility and joy, but also of his willingness to cross the threshold of discomfort, uneasiness, and fear. His companions later recalled that St. Francis met every creature and plant, river and stone, with reverence and courtesy, enabling him to live in harmony with an untamed natural world and with other people in a time of conflict. This book is an introduction to the natural world so beloved by this extraordinary saint. Let's dive in. This was written in dun, dun, dun. the first edition was October 2009. The cover image was actually one of the hermit's caves at the sanctuary at Laverna. Ooh, interesting. The title page was a mosaic by G. Tereni on the lane below the sanctuary of Laverna. And the this is the convent of Monte Casal in Tuscany, where St. Francis converted the three robbers through his kindness. And there's that picture there. Okay, so what are the contents? Oh, wait, it's dedicated to our fathers, Ray, looks like Ray Lamb, and Harold Bean, who shared their love of the natural world with us. I will say a lot of that introductory stuff and what's written back here about the two authors and the dedication is in a kind of a fancy font. And I'm not wearing my reading glasses, but it's legit not easy to read. And the rest of the book does seem to be in a normal, normal, mm, spoke too soon. 
a lot of it seems to be in a Times New Romanish font. There's a table of contents, which includes some of the photos to lure you in. So it tells you there's a foreword, a timeline, and a preface, an introduction, map, key, vegetation, and geology diagrams, sister mother earth, geology, brothers winds and air, climate, sister water, color, flower, and herbs, and all your creatures, plants, and animals, conclusion, further reading, image credits, and acknowledgments. And if you think some of those things are worded odd, they're taking that from the canto of the creatures, the sister mother earth, brothers wind and air, sister water, color, flowers, and herbs. That all comes from the Canticle of the Creatures. So the Path of Laverna. Um, let's jump in though and find beyond the introduction kind of what things are going to look like. This book is nice because it's not just nature photos. You might think that this could just be a coffee table book of photos, but it's not. It's getting, letting you get to know things about. So here's the timeline of St. Francis is set up. Um, it's not a timeline, it's a chronography. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, a little preface with some more art. Um, something that happens on and on is you may have a page here with text. And this over here is a little side note that seems to be quotes a lot of the times. And those are done in the different font. The one that's not really easy to read. Um, for example, the letter B looks more like a circle with a line coming off the top. It looks a little bit more like this, <laughs> the letter B. So it's a little bit hard to tell what that is. Um, I want to go beyond introduction. It does give you a nice map and outlines where Umbria is. It also gives you... Um, the different kinds of rocks and time periods. So it goes into a good bit of the natural history of the region. I'm just gonna flip to a section. This is says, again, here is a quote. Here is a little bit, it says it's about karst. And then a small feature on lichens and then a big feature of the a larger scene. Where you might see that. Um, And it's really not just a coffee table book. I'm going to read you the caption underneath that big landscape photo. Softly rounded depressions called mortars form on the limestone heights of Mount Sebasio. They create a sheltering microclimate for trees on these wind-blown slopes. And now look again. You see in the depression, that is the only place where those trees are able to grow. The wind must not get them as much there. That's very interesting. But again, the captions are in a fancy font and are a little bit difficult to read. That's the general format for the book. You're going to have some big pictures, some small pictures. Um, this one goes more into it. You can see this is like, so sister, son, and brother wind, but then it's going to go on more here. You're going to get your quote. Another two pages. I'm just showing you how long a chapter might be. Um, then it's going to go into the seasons. Still on the seasons. More on the seasons. And then we hit sister water. So there are decent sized chapters. We'll go back to the table of contents. Look at how long those chapters are. Uh, the timeline and preface, what they're calling that, is two pages. The foreword was only one. The introduction seems to be two. Map, key, vegetation, and geology is two pages. Sister Mother Earth starts on 12, but goes until 21. So then they start to get longer, right? Um, yeah, then they seem to be, oh, okay. So Sister Mother Earth is 10 pages. Brothers Wind and Air, 10 pages. Sister Water, 20 pages. Color, flower, and herbs, and all your creatures, plants, and animals. That's more than 20 pages, like 24. Further reading and image credits and acknowledgement. So let's flip to the back. I mean, you can see these are lovely. They're, there's also some photos of different mosaics and things that you might see at some shrines along the way. Um, are there animals? Yes, there's a hedgie. I found him. 
<laughs> Sorry if you're any Jam Brett friends out there. I don't want to ruin that for you. Oh, maybe I didn't tell you the page number. You have to find that hedgie yourself. There is a hedgie in the book. There's some rare plants. Some of these photos are a little bit small. Some are full page. The quotes are from all over. Um, there's some Thomas of Chilano. Some trait from St. Francis. There's birds. There's orchids. Oh, there's more animals. You're going to have to find them yourself. Sorry, I was trying to get to the back, but it is... It, it is... Uh, it's going to draw you in. Let's see. Oh. So just so lovely. Yeah, you're going to want to go to Assisi. Remember, St. Francis actually lived outside the town. He didn't live inside the town. Um, as one of the friars said recently to us, that he never willingly stepped foot in Assisi after he had laid down his clothes and said he had no father but his father in heaven. Okay. Got to the back. And I missed the conclusion. Here it is. The conclusion, just two pages. It's pretty small. It's not, I mean, it says two pages, but remember we have our quotes on the outside, plus we have our photos. So it's not a lot to get in your way. There's quotes by St. Francis from Admonition 5, from Thomas of Chilano. Then the, the further reading, looks like that's about Times New Roman. And the image creds, of course, most of them are Tom Bean, but not all of them. So those are full page. Those no longer have quotes or pictures back in the further reading. So that makes it a little bit easier to read. Acknowledgements is just one page in the back. So let's kind of see where the further reading takes us. What are they talking about? It's a variety of books. There is one on Mediterranean ecogeography. Ecogeography? I don't know how you say that. One on the mountains of St. Francis, discovering the geologic events that shaped our earth. Murray Bodo, the tale of St. Francis. Oh, it says that one. I, that's not a Murray Bodo book I have. A charming retelling of classic Franciscan stories from different characters' points of views. Uh, there's the mystery of Mysteries of the Middle Ages. That's a lively account of major shifts in weight in Western thinking that emerged during the medieval period. Field Guide to Wildflowers of Southern Europe. Care for Creation, a Franciscan Spirituality of the Earth. Franciscan Prayer, On the Road with Francis of Assisi. Strange Landscape. And that is an overview of social, political, and spiritual trends in the time of St. Francis. The Nature of the Mediterranean Europe, an Ecological History. Francis of Assisi, A Revolutionary Life. Birds of Europe. Mapping Time, The Calendar and Its History. History of the Italian Agricultural Landscape. Uh, of course, Francis of Assisi, The Early Documents by William Short, po Poverty and Joy. Right, right, right. That's a Franciscan classic there. St. Francis of Assisi in Nature, Tradition and Innovation in Western Christian Attitudes Towards the Environment. Whew! That says it's a handy index of stories about St. Francis in the natural world. The Music of Silence. That's about Gregorian chant. Very interesting. Complete Mediterranean Wildlife and a La Russe Field Guide to the Trees of Britain and Europe. So quite a variety of further reading. That's what I wanted to see. That's kind of exciting. So this is probably going to really open your mind to even studying the ecology of Europe. Because I always talk about you really need to get out there and know your environment in the natural world around you. But what a great idea if when you're reading about somebody, whether the person was real or not, and you really want to get into that book and mindset, especially if the person was a saint, you may want to look at the natural world and how that God's revelation through the natural world affected this person. And so to do that, you're going to want to learn about the natural world they were in. This is a beautiful book. It is by Tao Publishing. I do think some of that fancy font is a little unfortunate, um, but it is a lovely, lovely book. It's not just a coffee table book. This is a real reader here. Now, it, the chapters are fairly short and the sections are short and you could just sit and read the quotes. So you can make it, you know, a short little read if you want. You can make it into something longer. You could read it all at one sitting. You could take it outside to a park and read it. Grab it and read it on the plane on your way over to Assisi. Or use it as a stepping board to learn more about St. Francis from doing all that further reading. Anyway, 
check it out the natural world of saint francis of assisi by susan lamb and tom bean god bless you friends bye